Happy Sunday. According to my clock, it is 2 p.m. on the East Coast. So if you are on the East Coast, New York time, uh, good afternoon. If you are someplace else in the world, uh, good evening or good morning because it might be your Monday morning. So let's see where we have people from. I see, I see Shirley and Nancy and Linda, Pam. So we've got people from Phoenix, New Jersey, Spain. Hola, Maria Carmen. So we have people from everywhere. Uh, Lynn is here, Marilyn, and lots of other people. Okay, so it looks like the stream is running, so we are going to go ahead and get started. First, let me introduce uh, myself to those of you who are watching for the first time. My name is Yvonne Davila Beagle, and this is another live lesson from the Jelly Roll Club. And so the purpose of the Jelly Roll Club is literally to provide quilters of all experience levels with lessons and projects that we can work on together as a group. And so all of the patterns that we do together are normally free. Um, I teach you all of the steps in a complete lesson um, and we usually do it once a month. And so this is lesson one of the Dresden plate project. So if you have any questions, drop them in the chat so that I can see them. Also, um, if you have not subscribed to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified every time that we do a live stream. Okay, everybody. So welcome to those of you who are here and let's go ahead and get started with lesson one of the Dresden project. Switch cameras really quick. All right, so what is a Dresden? A Dresden plate is a block that you can make using wedges. And so we're gonna be talking about blades and wedges quite a bit. So what I have here are, first of all, an example. So the first thing that you saw when you saw the uh, thumbnail for this project was this block right here, which is a traditional Dresden block that is made with an 18 degree wedge that a lot of you guys have seen, right? It usually comes like this. I don't know if you can see that, so let me put a paper behind there. It normally comes like this in most stores, and they usually sell it with like a little pokey thing. And that is an official term in quilting is the pokey thing. So let me show you my pokey thing that came with it. So if you have one of these traditional Dresdens, it should have come with a little pokey thing. But if it didn't, don't worry. You don't have to have a pokey thing. You can use anything that is not um, sharp, like the tip of your scissors, um, to work on this project. So let's talk about Dresdens, right? A traditional Dresden plate is a 360 degree circle, right? And so this 360 degree circle is made of blades. And oftentimes your templates will have degree markings on them. And I'll give you an example. I have this Dresden here that I purchased a long time ago and it says 15 degrees. This one is an 18 degree wedge. And if you notice, the angle on the side is a, is a lot different on this one than on this one. Or I might have another one that maybe is a nine degree wedge, like this one. And this one is super skinny, right? And so what that means is that in order to know how many pieces to cut out for my Dresden, I need to know the degrees of each wedge. And you take 360 degrees, which is a complete circle, and you divide it by the number on your, your wedge. So like this one says nine degrees, this one says 15. And that is how you arrive at the number of pieces that you will need to cut to make one complete Dresden. Okay, on our website, so if you go to www.jellyrollclub.com, you should have seen a pattern that looks like this, right? So that's the first thing. So let's identify the pattern we're gonna be using. In this pattern uh, that I gave you, there are three different size wedges. There's a 22 degree, 22 and a half actually, and so you need 16 of this wedge to make a full circle. There is an 18 degree, which is 20. That's what you see here, this is a 20 wedge. And then you have a thin 10 degree, 
which requires 36 of these wedges to make a complete circle. But what happens if you don't have a printer or your printer died or you're somewhere where you don't necessarily have access to download and copy this? Well, you can always make your own Dresden and I'm gonna show you. So for those of you who do not have this, um, and I asked you to bring two printed copies and you'll see why in a minute. If you do not have this, I'm gonna start by showing you how to draft your own. And so if you just have a piece of cardboard, like this is the back of a notebook, you can see the three holes. I'm gonna show you how to quickly draft an 18 degree Dresden blade using literally just your um, ruler that you normally cut with. So I have a little ruler here, right? And this ruler is um, six and a half inches long actually. And so what I'm gonna do, the first thing that I do is I'm gonna lay that ruler so that this line is parallel. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark three and a half inches, right? So if you do not have access to a uh, printer or a copy machine, don't worry about it because I'm gonna quickly show you how to draft yours. So I'm gonna line it up here. And using a thin ink pen, you're gonna mark right here at the tip of the ruler and you're gonna come across three and a half inches. And so there's the three and a half inch mark. You're gonna draw a line. So from the tip to the tip, this is a three and a half inch line. And this is actually the top of your Dresden blade. Then you're gonna mark the halfway point, right? The halfway point for three and a half, and I'm gonna let, I mean, three, yeah, three and a half, I'm gonna lay this right here, is one and three quarters. So I will take this and make sure that I'm perfectly centered between those lines and that it's exactly three, and I'm gonna come to one and three quarters, and I'm gonna put a little dot right there. Next, I rotate my ruler and I'm gonna line that up with that bottom line and I'm gonna measure five inches up like this. And if I'm going too fast, please let me know, I will repeat. So first, you're gonna draw a line three and a half inches, right? Three and a half inches across the bottom you're gonna find the center point, which is one and three quarters, and then you're gonna draw a vertical line that's five inches long. Then I'm gonna rotate this, and I need a line that is one inch, but I need it centered. Because if you notice, the one thing that most of these templates have in common is that the bottom of these blades, regardless of what their degrees is, is that these are typically about one inch across the bottom and they're pretty close to being the same. And if you measure a lot of templates, they're usually one inch across the bottom. See, that one is one inch. And that's a 15 degree. If you notice this one, this is a nine degree and that is one inch. And if I take this one that's an 18 degree, that one is also one inch and that's fairly standard. So regardless of what degrees you have, this end of the Dresden blade is usually one inch. And let me put these off to the side. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the one inch line and I'm gonna center it right here. So where it's right at the half inch line. And so there's the half inch mark, right, for this ruler. And so I'm gonna line that half inch line right there with the tip of that. And I'm gonna line it so that it's nice and straight. And I'm gonna mark a one inch line across there. So now I have a one inch line. So I have a three and a half, a five inch, and a one inch across the top. And now all I have to do to complete my Dresden blade is take this spot and this spot right here and I'm going to connect those. And then I'll take this spot and this spot on the ends of those and I'm gonna connect those. 
And what I have now is an 18 degree Dresden template. And so that means I will need 20 blades out of this template. What do you do once you have this? Well, because this is made out of nice cardstock, I can cut it out. My scissors. And I could use a regular ruler like this one to cut out my blades. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So you cut this out and you cut it carefully so that it's not much bigger or smaller than the line. Right, so I've got my scissor right at that line. And so that is a five inch blade. That is the size blade I use to make this particular block, but I have that one now. And if I did not have a special Dresden uh, ruler, I could actually just take this and place it right underneath a regular ruler, hold it with a little bit of double-sided tape, and I could cut my pieces using this, okay? Because I could technically line them up, lay that like this, push my ruler up against that with a little edge, and I could literally just cut. And then I could take my ruler and rotate it to the other side and cut. If this is thick enough, you could actually just use a pencil of any type. I like to use a regular thin pencil and you could actually just draw a line and cut it out. So you could literally just draw a line on either side of that and then cut with a pair of scissors. So it doesn't matter if you don't have a bunch of fancy supplies, you can still work on this project. So that's a template that you could draft for a 20 blade Dresden. This is an 18 degree blade, okay? If you don't want to use this method, you could always take two of the paper templates that I shared with you, and you can actually tape them near image on a ruler like this, and then you could use that to speed cut all of your blades without a template, right? And so let me just go over this really quick. For those of you who are drawing, your template, let me just repeat that. You're gonna start by drawing a three and a half inch line across the bottom. You're gonna find the midpoint, which is one and three quarters. You're gonna draw vertically five inches, and then you're gonna center, and you're gonna draw a half inch in either direction because you want this to be one inch across. And then you connect the sides and that gives you your 18 degree blade that you can use as a template. And like I said, you don't have to have a fancy Dresden. You can use a regular ruler to uh, cut out with this template. You could simply use double-sided tape and put that on there. But uh, one method that I like, if you don't have a million Dresden uh, templates like I do, is this method here where you take two of your paper templates and you simply cut them out on this outside line that you have right here. And then you lay them on a ruler just like I have. Determine what length you want. And this ruler is the Creative Grids three and a half by 12 and a half. And this one works great because I just take, see where this white line is down the middle? And I put them mirror image. If you notice, one is going one way and one is going the other way. And I put the small sides right here. And so this is another way of using the paper templates if you do not have an actual Dresden ruler. Okay, so that's what I gave you these for. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make uh, one full circle using an 18 degree wedge, which on your template is marked 
20, right? It's 20. And before you cut anything, make sure you measure this. And this should measure two inches across. And if you lay your ruler on there, that should be exactly two inches and mine is. So I know that this template is accurate. And if you print it multiple times, just double check that all of those are correct. All right. All right, so let's talk about cutting with the cutting with a paper template. So if you notice, I took my uh, paper templates and I cut uh, and I cut them out, and then I taped them to the back of my ruler. So I taped them so that they don't move. I made sure that they were nice and flush, and then I taped them with clear tape and I put them on there. Now I'm ready to go, right? So I will take a small little rotary mat that I have right here, actually just a regular mat, and I'm going to take my little pieces that I have prepared and ready to go, and I'm going to cut them out. So I'm going to start with a little piece of fabric, oh, and that one's too small, what do I do with my stack? Do you guys ever lose piles of things in your sewing room? That's how I feel today. Yeah, here we go. Here's my little stack of pieces. So I have a little stack and I took my template and I cut my template down to four and a half inches or four inches, whatever, however long you want your Dresden to be. And I'm going to take and I'm going to lay it like this and I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to align this ruler so that the top of that paper template is across the top of that piece just like that and so I'm aligning this bottom and this top and I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and I'm just gonna slice one side now I'm gonna lift this up and flip my little tiny cutting mat and I got this at the Dollar Tree and I just cut with this one so I'm gonna slide my ruler and I'm gonna lay the second template that I have and I'm going to align it with the top and the bottom and I'm going to cut and this is how you would use your paper template right so this is the paper template method so if you don't have a fancy ruler don't panic you can draw your template you can tape your template on there right or you can print the ones I sent you um, on the website and then you can make your templates using your little blades using just a regular ruler, okay? If you're, uh, if you're, somebody asked a question, so why does the paper template extend past the one inch mark? The reason I did that is I wanted to give you um, freedom to make that center hole bigger or smaller, okay? And so let me show you. So this is what a blade looks like, right? And this particular blade uh, is a 22 and a half. That means for a Dresden plate using this size, I would need 16. And I've made a small one using this size right here. And this is what it looks like when I'm done. So this is my baby, right? I took that blade and if you notice, it extends way into the circle. Um, but I just made my center bigger and I stitched it around and then I uh, embroidered because I wanted messages in the middle of this particular Dresden plate. Okay? And somebody asked the question, have you ever made a tuffet and what angle are those blades? Well, it depends. You can make a tuffet with blades of any angle. So as long as your um, Tough it is uh, 360 degrees, which is what it is. You can actually make a paper template and you can even tape pieces of paper together to make a wide one. So to make this particular blade longer, all I would have to do is keep that angle going further and further and further out. But I would keep this part the same because this is actually the top of the Dresden, which gets pinked like this. And then this is the bottom, which goes to the inside right so that is how you would make it you could make a sprocket pillow 
or or other things by drawing your own Dresden uh, blades. Okay, so that is just your basics of getting a template ready and cutting your blocks, right? So cutting your pieces for your blocks. So I have a piece here that is five inches, right? So the blade started out as five inches. This is an 18 degree and I used 20. This one, these started out as four inches and I used a 22 and a half, so I only have 16, right? If I took the same template and I only used the end of the template and only used the top half, so if I used only the top half of uh, this template right here, if I started cutting from here and only used the top half, let's say the top three inches, which is what I did, and didn't use the bottom of the template, I would end up with something that looks like this. And these pieces started out the same as these, but I didn't have the center part. And this uh, particular Dresden would be great to layer with another one. And so if I wanted to get a double Dresden or one that looks like two together, this is how I would do it. I would take my template and I would cut only the, from the tip end to the inside and not the center. Or you can cut from the center to the outside or make them much smaller. So this is how you would adjust the size of all of your uh, Dresdens is by making this particular uh, template so if you want your circle to be smaller, you remove from the, the top, the wide end of your blade. If you want it to be bigger and have a, a larger center, then you remove from the center of the template on over, okay? All right, so what happens if you don't know what degrees your templates are? And sometimes you don't know. Um, one of the things that you can do is you can print uh, do a, a printable protractor or get a protractor and a, you can lay it down and use that to calculate the exact uh, measurements on your particular template. Um, the other thing that you could do is you can make blades and make like a fourth of a Dresden and see how many blades it takes you to make a fourth of a Dresden. Okay, so that's just the basics about the templates. Does anybody have any questions about the templates? All right, so this is the this is the three sizes that you can make um, with just uh, the templates I've given you. You can make great big uh, Dresdens like this. This is the full width. And so if you look at this one, this is a nice big 13 inch Dresden. So that's the biggest Dresden that you can make. If you take these and cut them full length, you can make a nice big 13 inch Dresden. If you um, cut them down and do five inches, then you can make like an 11 inch Dresden that fits nice in a 12 by 12 block. Or if you cut them smaller, like uh, four inches, you can make a nice small nine inch Dresden. And so by adjusting your template, you can make them whatever size you want. All right. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get started and I'm gonna show you how to put together uh, the Dresden so this is the skill builder. This is lesson number one, and I'm going to show you how to put this one together. And for those of you who are wondering where the templates are, uh, the paper templates that I provided are these, and they're found at www.jellyrollclub.com. Okay. All right, friends, do I have any questions before I switch my camera view? Does anybody have any questions? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So for this example that I'm gonna make you, I have a total of 20 blades, right? And I've cut them out from a single fabric so I can go really, really fast and I'm not gonna get fussy. And I'm gonna show you what to do. So whatever method you use to cut these, you can cut them with a rotary cutter, you can cut them with scissors, you can cut them however you want. The first step is always the same. And so for step one, you're gonna take every one of these and you're gonna fold them pretty sides together and you're gonna to fold them to the inside. So you're gonna fold them like this, 
and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So let me switch camera views. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fold these pretty sides together, right? It doesn't matter. This is a batik, so it's hard to tell, but they're all going to be pretty sides together. So you're going to take those little blades, and these are tiny Dresdens, right? And you're going to take those blades, and you're just going to fold them pretty sides together. And this is a 9 degree uh, Dresden, so that's why it doesn't look very sharp of an angle. And you're going to just going to pinch it, and you're going to sew with a very small stitch a quarter inch away from the edge. Okay, so that's what you're going to do to all of your blades. You're literally just going to fold them in half, and you're going to stitch from the open side to the closed side. And you're going to do that to all of your Dresden blades, so let me show you. So this is Bertha. She's my brother, PQ1500. I love her because she sews fast like the wind. And so I can sew all 20 of these lickety split. All right, so remember, fold them in half, pretty sides touching, and then I'm gonna feed them open side through the here and sew a quarter of an inch. I'm using a very tight stitch, which is a 2.0 because I don't want those to come open on me. And I'm, I'm not back stitching, but I'm folding them in half and I'm just gonna feed them through here. Like a, like a little daisy chain. So I'm gonna sew all of these right through here, a quarter of an inch away from the end. In no particular order, because these are all the same color, same fabric, these were all cut from the same set of jelly roll strips. And so I'm gonna do this to all of my pieces. I'm just gonna take and fold them in half, pretty sides touching. And I'm gonna make this thing that looks like a little flag, like a string of flags, right? So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna take my little string of flags and I'm gonna put them together and it looks like a little string, right? All of my little blades together. So that's the first thing that you're gonna do. You're just gonna do that to all of your pieces. So whether you have 16 pieces, 36 pieces, or if you're using a nine degree wedge and you need 40 pieces, then you're gonna do the same thing to all of them, okay? And don't panic um, about being too precise and too perfect. The main thing that you wanna make sure is that the, the two ends of your fabric are actually touching like this so that they're folded and they're touching and these ends are even and then you're sewing from the open side across to the, clo to the fold and that you're sewing straight across with a quarter of an inch seam. Now, in this series, as we go on, I'm gonna teach you other ways to sew a Dresden. So you're gonna learn how to do an arched, an arched end. You're gonna to learn to do a double layer Dresden. I'm gonna show you how to make a chunky Dresden, a circle of love, and all kinds of other fun Dresden blocks because we're gonna make those look like flowers. So as you think about this project, think about the kinds of fabrics that you might need to collect because you only need a couple of strips for each block. So each block takes about three or four jelly roll strips depending on how big you make your Dresden plates. And so you can just use your scraps for this project. You don't have to go out and buy a bunch of uh, fabric so if you have stuff in your stash in colors like reds and purples or blues or anything that reminds you of flowers uh, please i encourage you to use your stash okay um, somebody said are we making all three templates of wedge and what colors well you decide what color you want to do and then I will suggest a wedge size for you so we are going to be using all three wedges to make our flowers 
and then you decide what color flowers you want. Because, for example, um, the very next month we have a Black Eyed Susan. Well, Black Eyed Susans come, or a flower that come in a bunch of different colors. So we might do a yellow, like a traditional Black Eyed Susan. Or you can do a red Black Eyed Susan or any other color that you want. They could be hot pink. I mean, they're your flowers and it's gonna be your garden. So you decide how you want those flowers to look. You can even make them in non-traditional colors and that's okay too. All right, look at that. So I have taken all 20 of the blades and I've turned them into this thing that looks like a banner, right? So I've got this big thing. And so now we're ready to go to step two. So this was step one. Take them all, fold them in half, pretty sides touching. And make sure that they are all like this. And let me move this out of, out of our hair. So now I'm gonna grab my little pressing board that I like to use. And I'm gonna take all of these and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing to all of them. And so I have my little hot baby iron. I'm gonna use this uh, pokey thing, such a technical name, right? You can use your scissors that are rounded on the end. You can use a chopstick. You could use just about anything or even a paintbrush or a bodkin. You don't have to have special tools to do this, this next step. So step one, make sure they're all stitched. And like I said, sew them with um, a quarter inch seam and put them all in a little row like this. And you can, if you guys have one of those little things that clip your threads in between, you can use those. I just like doing it with scissors, but be careful not to nip the parts that are sewn. I always leave a little string of thread in between because I don't want to accidentally cut where I just sewed. So I'm just gonna pile these up now and I'm ready to go for step two, it's super fast. You're, you're gonna be like, wow, that's a really fast block, and it is. And so most people think that this is a super complicated block, and it's actually not complicated at all. It just takes a little bit of practice. Okay. All right, so I have all 20 blades in a big pile and I'm ready for the pressing. So step one was sewing them all. Step two is pressing them all. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take and you're gonna use your scissors and you're gonna take this end right here where the fold is, sticking my finger in there, and I'm gonna trim at an angle like this. I'm gonna take a little bulk out of there. Not a lot, just a little. And I'm gonna snip without cutting that stitching line. I'm gonna leave at least an eighth of an inch, but I'm gonna cut those at an angle like this. And so I want all of my little ends to be angled because I'm gonna make that a nice sharp point. And in order for that to be a nice sharp point, I need to get rid of the bulk. And I like these scissors because they don't slip. These are serrated, so if you don't own a pair of serrated scissors, try to find them. They're amazing for doing these kinds of little tasks where you have to cut because your fabric doesn't slip. And so I'm just quickly taking right here where I stitched, and I'm coming in at like a 45 degree angle, and I'm nipping that. And I'm gonna do that to all 20 of my blades. Super fast, super easy. I can make a complete Dresden plate from start to finish in about 30 minutes. So it doesn't take long. You could make these by the dozen. And actually, Dresden plates are one of my favorite blocks because you could use them as a quilt label. So in this one that I made here, if you notice, I have a giant uh, circle in the middle and I embroidered by hand you could actually machine embroider and make your quilt labels and put them on a Dresden block and then attach them to the back of a quilt. 
and those are beautiful, beautiful quilt labels. And so you could add a little more interest to your um, quilts by adding a Dresden plate to the back as like your signature block or your dedication block or even your quilt label. All right. Someone had a question. They said, are all the blocks going to be the same size each month? No, they're not. They're going to be different sizes, and we're going to use different degrees because we're going to make different flowers. Okay? All right. So we have this big pile of 20. Now I'm going to set them to the side, and now comes the pressing part. I'm going to stick my finger in here, and I'm going to flip that. And then I'm gonna take this little chopsticky thingy that came with it, this little bamboo skewer, and I wanna flatten that. And I want this to lay right in the middle. And so I wanna make sure that there's no bulk coming. And I'm gonna take my hot little iron and I'm gonna press the top of the blade. I'm gonna lay my iron. And be careful with these because this is a bias edge and so they can get distorted. So these are lightly starched. If you notice, my fabric has a tiny, tiny bit of starch to it, but not much. And the reason I lightly starch them is so that they will not um, stretch. And so just handle them carefully. Like I said, stick a finger in there, flip it over, poke it with the chopstick. Uh, the fabric that I'm using is a Tonga Batik, and it is uh, a multicolored boutique. Let me see if I have a piece of it over here. But uh, it's this color right here. It's just uh, got a multicolor like watercolor effect to it and it's all different colors. And so that's why I'm just using one fabric instead of multiple fabrics. And so I'm just pressing them. And I'm going to find blades that I want to go together because the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these into pairs, okay? Most people assume that when they see that Dresden plate that you just start sewing on one end and you just keep adding blades until you complete your circle. But if you do that, your circle is going to end up being distorted. So in a Dresden plate, you start uh, by matching up these that you have pressed like this, and you're going to match them up where these meet right here, and you're gonna put them pretty sides together like this. And then you're gonna sew down this side, right? This doesn't have to line up, but this most certainly does. And so you're gonna start sewing here on the Dresden plate. And when you um, come in, you're gonna come in and you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam you're gonna stop right here as soon as you take a couple of stitches and you're gonna back tack just one stitch backwards. And the reason I do that is to provide strength to this block, okay? Somebody says, what size are the blocks going to be? We're going to make all of the Dresdens first and then we're gonna put the Dresdens onto a big giant background and make it look like a garden. So if you go to the website, it tells you what we're going to be doing each month and it tells you um, what supplies you need and basically all of the other details that you need for this particular project, okay? All right, so you're going to sew them all in pairs like this and in this case, one fourth of 20 is five. So I'm gonna press this to one side. I'm not gonna open it. Some people will tell you to press them open. I do not. I find that my Dresden plate ends up wavy if I press it open because it stretches it too much. So I'm just going to the side and I'm gonna press it like this. And I'm putting uh, pressure downward, but I'm not scrubbing sideways. So I'm just gonna put it like this and that gave me one pair. And so I'm gonna sew all of my Dresdens into little pairs like this, right? So I'm gonna find some that are not alike. And you push with your chopstick. 
and then you press all of these little things and you're gonna put them into pairs, right? The next one that I'm gonna look for, and see that seam in there? You're just gonna lay it to one side, like that. Center that, and press. And the pressing is super important. I can't tell you how important it is to press these carefully. I take and I hold my iron down, then I lift it and move it, lift it and move it, lift it and move it, lift it and move it. And I press on a wooden board, not a wool, wool board because it makes my pieces super flat. And so now I can take this one. I know that I probably want this yellow one on this side to give it a watercolor effect. So that means this is the next pair that I'm gonna sew. And you're gonna do that to all of your blocks. Like I said, matching this top right up here. And when I go to my sewing machine, I'm going to backstitch just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna take two stitches and then I'm gonna backstitch one stitch and then I'm going to continue sewing that quarter of an inch all the way down. And I could chain piece this entire block into two piece units. And look at that, that matches up there, which is what I want. This down here at the bottom does not uh, match evenly, but it doesn't matter because this is gonna get covered up by my circle. So I have that one. I have that one. So I'm just gonna carefully finger press it after I set that seam. I'm gonna make sure that I don't have any tucks in that seam and I'm gonna lay my iron down for a few seconds. And that should be nice and flat. And I'm going to take, and now I can sew these two pairs into a group of four. And I'm gonna sew all of the rest of my pieces into groups of four, just like this. So I'm not gonna sew from one side and go all the way to the other. Okay, so this is the next step, right? And when you iron, don't scrub. I take my iron and I move it and then I push down. And so then this is what I have. I have what looks like a butterfly wing, which we will be making butterflies in this project. Um, this could be a partial flower if I put a stem on it and put it in a flower pot. So you could do a lot of things with this. Um, if you have seen, some blocks we'll take and we'll put just a few in the corner and then put a semicircle and so you can do blocks this way. And so Dresden plates are very fun blocks because you can do a lot of fun things with them. Um, I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna pull it slightly outward and I'm gonna press it down wherever it wants to go, just kind of finger press it. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want this to get um, little tucks in the front. And now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna carefully press this particular segment. And if I look at this segment, I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out because it is laying very flat. If you get any waves in your Dresden plate or your Dresden plate is not laying flat, then that means that you may have some uneven seams going on here and I will show you um, that in just a second how to fix that. It says, does it matter which direction you press the seams on the back? No, it does not. So it doesn't matter if you notice this one is going this way, this one is going that way. It doesn't matter which direction they go as long as you lay them to one side and not fillet them open. 
because if you fillet them open, you're gonna end up with some distortion in your seams. And I never do that. And it also weakens them over time. So when you're sewing, if you have ever taken a seam and pulled it open and you stretch it like this, you can see those stitches. So when you take and you press the seam open, the only thing left between you and the batting is just those stitches. You see that? If I press it, I can actually see through there. And over time, these stitches can break, especially if somebody sits on your quilt or um, washes the quilt in the washing machine. And the next thing you know, you're gonna have seams that are breaking open. And so I like to always press to the side because I don't want my seams to weaken over time. And so just make sure that you're pressing them both seams to one side. And then when I sew these down, I like to sew them along the edge. And then I like to come down along those blades and anchor them to the background so that my uh, quilts will last through lots and lots of washings. And so that is a great question. Does anybody else have any questions about the process, right? So the next thing you're doing, so whether you're sewing a little, a little Dresden blade or a big Dresden blade is you're gonna match up those sides. And this is a nine degree, so this one requires 40. And you're matching it up here at the top. You're putting those down and you're sewing them a quarter inch away from the seam and you're pressing those to the side, okay? So I'm gonna add one more blade to this grouping and make it a group of five because five is exactly one fourth of a circle. And I like to test before I put my four quarters together, I like to test to see if my Dresden plate is gonna be accurate. And so this is the next piece I'm gonna add here. I could either add it on this side next to this blue, which I think I will, or I can add it on this side, it doesn't really matter. I just have to make sure that I'm matching it right here and I'm sewing all the way down. Oops, let's move this little iron out of the way. And like I said before, start at the top, back tack just a hair, like one stitch, and then come all the way down. So now I have a fourth of my block pieced together, right? A fourth of my Dresden blade. I'm gonna gently bring my finger across there and take my nail because that, like I said, this is a bias edge and I don't wanna stretch it. And so I'm just carefully pressing that. Um, what can you use to press your blocks? Yes, you could most certainly use a cutting board if you have one. Mine is just a piece of wood, right? So it's just a piece of wood that has little feet on it. And on it is a very thin piece of batting and a little bit of cotton duck that's been stapled. But you most certainly could use a cutting board and you could put um, a piece of cloth on top of a cutting board and use that um, to press. All right, so these right here are 18 degree bl uh, blades and these are uh, the full length of the blade. So these are five and a half inches, right? So these started out as an 18 degree and they're five and a half inches. So I stopped there at the five and a half inch mark and that's what I'm working with. And what you see that went away is where I, I, I sewed that quarter inch across the top and that is now one fourth of my block. Why do I want one fourth of my block? Well, I wanna see if my circle is gonna end up correct. So I always take and I stop at one fourth, one fourth and I lay it down 
and I see on my board if this is going from this corner, if it's touching this corner to this corner, then I know that my circle is looking pretty good and it's not going to be super distorted. And so now I'm going to do the rest of these. All of the blades um, that I'm using today are 18 degree blades that are five and a half inches long. So I went from here and I stopped at the five and a inch, five and a half inch mark. I cut it off, cut that end, and I made them five and a half inches for this particular block I'm showing you. Does anybody else have any questions? You don't need to buy any templates at all. So if you don't have templates already, you can draw templates and I'm gonna give you measurements next time for drawing a nine degree and a 22 degree uh, template. So you don't have to have any templates at all if, if you don't want to. So there I go, I'm gonna do this to all of them. Take and poke it in there. Like I said, you can use a bodkin. So a bodkin has a little rounded end and you could push that in there. You just want something that's gonna give you a nice sharp point without piercing the fabric. So that would work. You could use a paintbrush. So I have this little paintbrush that I use to clean out my sewing machine. And you're gonna flip it and push that in there. Just like that so you get a nice sharp point. And you're gonna lay it in a little pile and then press them all. All right. For those of you who joined us late and wanna know about using the paper templates, you can rewind this after the live stream is over and it'll show you um, at the beginning how I taped my templates onto a regular ruler and you can use those to cut. So you can tape them onto a regular ruler and use those to cut for those of you who are wondering about that, okay? All right, let me push this in. Like I said, anything that'll let you get in there and push that little corner out, and that's why we removed the bulk. Remember, you cut it at a 45 degree, and look at how quickly I'm putting together a big pile of blades. So now I'm gonna press, 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 and I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna make sure that this, um, that this pile here is the same as that other one. I'm just gonna take and flip it with my finger, push it in, and then you're gonna push it with your finger so that it's nice and centered. So this line right here at the top goes right down the middle as you press. And I've done this so many times that it's easy, but if you mess it up, don't panic. You can come back and repress if you need to. But I've done this lots of times and I can tell exactly where the center is. And so you're just gonna take your fingers and you're gonna spread that, spread that out just a hair. Make sure this line goes down the middle of your blade and stack them up really quickly. I mean, it takes no time at all to make an entire dressed in plate. So for this Dresden plate that you're making today, you're just practicing the scrap, you're practicing the skill, right? The skills that you're practicing is cutting with a template, and that could be an acrylic template or a paper template. And then the next thing is pressing so that you get a nice sharp point. So all of my blades have a nice sharp end in other episodes or other lessons, we're gonna talk about doing an applique end, a rounded end, cathedral points, and those are all different finishes for the end of our Dresden plate. And so in each of the lessons, you're gonna learn a different way of finishing your Dresden or manipulating your templates so that you get a totally different look in order to mimic some of the flowers we're gonna be making. And so this is a year long project for those of you who are with us, 
Uh, we're going to be taking all of our Dresden plates. You're going to make as many as you want. And your quilt can be as big or as little as you want it to be. And then we're going to take and make leaves and stems. And we're going to add things like uh, Dresden butterflies and ladybugs. And we're going to make a uh, an entire quilt using all of the Dresden plates that will then get applique on a background. Okay. And you can come back and rewatch the video as many times as you want to after the live stream is over. So if there's a part that I went over and you're like, oh, I, I didn't understand that part, you can go back and rewatch it. Okay. Use a very hot iron and my uh, jelly roll strips, I spray them with a little bit of starch, just regular starch, before I got started. So there they are, all 20 blades. See how quickly that goes? I already have a few here, and I'm gonna lay them out. Again, I'm gonna repeat this part. I'm gonna do them in pairs, so I'm gonna sew them in pairs. I'm gonna try not to put the same fabric next to it. Switch the colors around. So maybe a pink. And I'm going to stack the pairs like this before I take them over to the sewing machine. And it goes really, really quick. Um, you can make these out of a single fabric like I'm doing it. You can make them out of different fabrics so that every blade is different, um, like this one here. So this is like a color wheel. And what I did is because a color wheel only has 12 colors, I added a couple of colors. So I added like two yellows. I added an extra green. Um, I added an extra blue. And so that stretched out my 12 uh, blade color wheel to 16. And that's why I have this pink thrown in there. And so you can take and you can make all of the blades a different color, or you can do like I'm doing and make all the blades the same color. So it's up to you how you decide to make your block. I think it's going to be a lot of fun uh, to make these flowers. You're going to have to go to the website. So if you go to our website and you look at the pattern instructions or the pattern description, you're going to see uh, some ideas of how this is going to turn out in the end. And I'm going to save these three to the side because I'm going to use these as connectors. All right, so now I'm going to sew all of these pairs. So I'm going to go over here to the sewing machine really quick. And I'm gonna sew all of these pairs together. Like I said, put them together here at the top, sew down, and I'm gonna go really fast. Back tack just a hair, and then go really fast. This is Speedy, my uh, fast sewing machine. That's why I like her, because I can sew really, really fast on this lady. Match them up. If you want to use pins on these, you can, but I find it's not necessary to use pins as long as those edges right here along the side are matched up, then you should be fine. Free yourself from the pins just for once. If you don't want to stop and press, in between these pairs, you can actually take, save yourself some time, and take these pairs that I already have and just add two of them together. So I could take two of these pairs like this, chop them off, and put them together. So I simply take without pressing, open it up, open the other side, pretty sides together, line up this edge, and then I can continue sewing. What you want to make sure that you're doing is that you're sewing always from the outside to the inside. 
In this case, you're not alternating directions. Normally, when you sew strips together, you want to alternate directions, but not in this particular case. So then I'm going to take the next two. And I'm going to put them together. And it doesn't really matter what order they go in. So I'm going to take these and put them together. And so now I'm sewing them into fours. And does anyone have any questions so far that they would like to ask? Somebody said they love this fabric. Thank you. Batiks are my favorite fabric to use because they are very dense. Um, the process of making a batik makes them basically pre-shrunk because they use a lot of hot water. See, so now there are four, and I can take one of those extras I had floating around and stick it on the end. So that makes it a five. So a group of five. And this is super fast and easy. You're gonna be like, wow, why didn't I make these before? Most people are scared of Dresden's because they look so incredibly complicated. But once you get the process down and you learn how to put your circles together and add the centers, and you're gonna be like, wow, this is easy peasy. We are not gonna be putting centers on our Dresden plate today because I'm gonna spend the next uh, the next lesson talking about circles only, okay? And all of the seam allowances that I'm using for this entire process are one quarter inch seam allowance, right? So now I have five together, and so I have two, two fourths, and then I have another one, and this has five, and I have two little pairs and a single lonely uh, guy that's gonna go in here. And so I'm gonna add him to this grouping and then attach the other one to the other side and then I am ready to put the entire dress and plate together. And this was super fast. Look, it's uh, three o'clock and I'm almost already done with this entire process. I like to put uh, four, uh, the four fourths or the four corners together and then after that, I like to put um, the four units and lay them out and put them together. There we go. If you're noticing that I'm, that I'm using a little piece of fabric at the beginning and at the end of all of these, these are called leaders and enders, and that keeps me from wasting thread or um, having to re-thread my sewing machine too often. All right. So I'll put this here and now I'm ready to go. Okay. All four of my quadrants are done now, and I can put them together. All right. All righty. And so, at the beginning of this lesson, I said the template that you use determines how many blades you need. I'm using an 18 degree template, which is the most common one that you see, and that one uses 20 blades, right? So what I have here are one, two, three, four fourths, right? So these are five blades each, and so that will give me a total of 20. And I'm gonna press this one, and you can see it doesn't matter which direction I press them as long as they're nice and flat. I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn that one to one side. It doesn't matter. I'm going to put that one that way. And I could actually just press them all one direction if I wanted to. It doesn't really matter. What I don't want to do is I don't want to distort my Dresden's. Now you're going to notice this is starting to kind of curve to one side. And this is the perfect reason why you don't just start sewing on one end and keep adding. Because what would happen is you would distort your circle and it wouldn't be a circle anymore. And so by sewing it into fourths, you reduce the amount of distortion that you have 
when you make your circle. If you notice now I can see that this is going to be an actual circle and I'm maintaining that circle, right? The magic math for Dresden's is 360 uh, degrees. So if you wanna know how many blades you need for any Dresden you have, you take 360 and you divide it by the degrees that's listed on your template. So if your template says nine degrees, you're gonna do 360 divided by nine, and that gives you 40. So you need 40 blades to make a nine degree Dresden, right? If you do 360 divided by 10, if you have a 10 degree template, which I have, then you're gonna need 36 blades to make a full circle. And so now I have I'm three quarters of the way. I've got one more segment to add to this. And it doesn't look like they're gonna fit, but they will. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see. I'm gonna press this one. So if you notice, I can, I'm gonna lay this here and I'm gonna lay this on top overlapping that quarter of an inch so I can see what this is looking like. And that is looking like it's gonna be a pretty good circle. If you um, measure exactly a fourth of an inch and overlap it, this should look like it's going across the horizon. So to me, this is off just a hair, but once I press it and get it all these in place, then I'll know for sure. But this is what I'm, I'm going for. I'm going for a full circle. So let me go ahead and press this one. I'm gonna sew these two together. I'm gonna sew these two halves together, and then I'm gonna join these at the side seams. If you are in the chat and you are answering questions for me, I so appreciate it because I'm trying to sew and I can't always keep an eye on what's happening in the chat. So if you're helpful to your friends, that's super duper. That is what the Jelly Roll Club is, is a sewing community. So if you have an answer, please share with your friends. I love that. Okay. Somebody said, how big are the blocks going to be for this project? We're not gonna make, you know, a traditional Dresden has squares, right? You take a square and you applique the Dresden plate on top of it. Uh, this is not that type of uh, Dresden project. In this project, you're gonna take and make all of your flower Dresdens, if that's what you choose to do, and then you're going to um, applique them onto a whole background, right? All right, so I have these four parts and now I am ready to go, right? And that looks kind of weird, but you're gonna see in a minute, it'll be just fine. So I'm gonna take this half and this half and put it together and I'm gonna sew them up. And I'm gonna match those again. I'm gonna back tack just a hair. And that's just to keep my block from uh, from breaking at that spot. And then I'm going to take the bottom half, and I'm going to do the same thing, pretty sides together. I'm going to start come in and sew right here. Always using a quarter inch seam, trying to keep that seam consistent from start to finish. I'm not going to stop and press at this point. I have one half up here. I have one half right here. And I'm gonna flip and put these on top. And I'm gonna sew from this side to the inside and from this side to the inside, I'm not gonna sew across. So I'm gonna match those up again. If you want to, you can put pins right here, 
but uh, I've been doing this a while and mine end up pretty even. Okay. Before I do that last seam, I'm going to take and I'm going to flip it over. That's looking pretty good so far. I'm going to match up this side and I'm again going to sew from the outside to the inside to complete my 360 degree circle. Becoming a quilter gave me a whole new appreciation for my high school geometry teacher. It's the one math I use all of the time. All right, for those of you who just joined us, we are working on a 18 degree Dresden plate. I showed people at the beginning how to make their own templates if they wanted to. Um, but these blades were cut um, five and a half inches using this template here. So I cut these with an 18 degree five and a half inches. And this is what it looks like. I needed 20 blades to make my circle. And now I'm going to do my final press. And if you notice, I've got a few places where this doesn't look like it's coming exactly where it should. And that happens for several reasons. One could be maybe I pressed too hard when I was pressing. Another one could be maybe I strayed just a little bit when I was sewing. And I'm going to show you how to fix that because that happens. None of us is perfect and so sometimes that happens. So I'm going to take and I'm going to press my circle from the front and I'm going to press all of the blades to see where I need to fix my Dresden. And so I'm going to take and lay those. I'm going to put my finger under there and turn the seam to the side. And I'm going to press towards the front. I'm going to go from the outside to the inside. Try not to stretch because if you play with these too much, you can really stretch them out and then your uh, Dresden will not lay flat. So I'm pressing this. I'm going around the circle and I'm pressing from the outside to the inside. And I'm pressing it to make sure that I don't have any pleats in my Dresden. I'm sticking my finger in there and I'm folding that seam to one side. And I'm pressing it all the way around, including where I just joined it. Okay. There we go. So now that I have my Dresden plate all assembled, I see a couple of places where there's a little bit of a wobble. If you see that, there's a little place here and a little place here where my Dresden is not laying exactly flat, right? It looks pretty good. It's a complete circle. I love how these uh, colors turned out, but I want my circle to lay completely flat. So what do I do? In this example, uh, Dresden, you see how flat this block is. What I did is I took, and in a couple of places, I took another little seam and just took the fullness and brought the fullness in. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So now that I have it, I'm gonna look and see right in here at which of my blades might be a little bit too wide. Because if it ended up too wide, that means when I was sewing, I kind of veered off course a little bit. And so I can come in here and I'm gonna look at this one and I'm gonna put a little pin on this one like this because I'm gonna make that one a tiny bit smaller because what I want is I want any fullness to be distributed evenly. That one looks like it's a little bit full. This one looks like it's a little bit full and so is this one. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm going to mark a couple of those spots so that I can fix it from the back. 
I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to come in and I'm going to make sure that I restitch and that I have a nice solid full quarter of an inch. And so in this case, I'm going to sew from this side back and I'm going to taper it out as I get to about the middle of the blade, right? So I'm going to come in here. And I took a tiny little stitch. If you notice, it is literally just a hair over from my original stitch and I'm coming out at an angle and then I'm leaving the circle. And I'm gonna pull this open. And then I'm gonna take that seam and I'm gonna run my finger across and look at it. And now this section is laying flat. And so I'm gonna go through here and I can do that in a couple of places. I can see here's another spot where I might need to fix. So I'm gonna put that pin over there. And I'm gonna do that to any blade that looks like it's a little bit too fat down here at the bottom. And what that does is it takes any fullness and it brings it in so that my Dresden plate lays perfectly, perfectly flat, right? So anything that looks like it's bubbling. But it doesn't have to be like super perfection because you're gonna turn around and you're gonna put a middle over that. See mine? And so if anything is uneven, as long as it lays flat, you're gonna take that circle and it's gonna cover any imperfections that you have. And so you don't really have to panic about that middle of your Dresden plate being perfection because I can turn around and this is just the bottom of a chopper that I have in my kitchen and I'm gonna make a center for that Dresden plate. I'd I could make a small center that just barely covers that, which in this case, it's gonna be a four inch circle, or I can make a great big circle like this one. This is a five inch circle. And I could make mine look more like a flower, like this one, okay? So this is how I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna take a few little nibbles over here's another spot that needs to be fixed. And I'm just gonna fix it because nobody's perfect, right? You can make these with charm packs, these Dresdens. Um, you can make them with jelly roll strips. You can make them with just about anything you want. So depending on what you have in your sewing room, just take what you've got and try to work on it. Like I said, I'm gonna be using jelly roll strips. These were jelly roll strips that I had in my sewing room, but you can use whatever you want to complete this project. Next, uh, next lesson is going to be the Black Eyed Susan. So if you have a variety of yellows or yellowy orange colored fabric, those would be great. But you can do them in purple as well um, because the, the genus of the, that flower is called Rudbeckia and they come in purple, they sometimes come in red. And so you determine what your flowers are gonna be. So it looks like this is cleaning up just fine. I'm gonna lay this flat and let me look at it again. And I'm gonna take and I'm just gonna play with my fingers, finger press it, and it's looking pretty darn good now. Right, it's almost completely flat. So without anything else, without any pressing, it's almost 100% completely flat. That looks like it's gonna lay nice when I press it. That one might need to be taken in just a hair right here along the seam, because this is kind of chunky and so is this one. So I've got a couple more places and then I'm gonna be done with this particular uh, dressing plate. And it'll be ready for me to set aside and save it for my middle. All right, so far, do you think you can do a Dresden plate? I think you can. Um, it's a lot easier than what most people realize it is. And so I'm gonna take, like I said, pull it up like this, start from the middle, take a small little stitch, 
come over here to the other one that I marked and do the same thing. And this block is a, a wrap, it's pretty much done. And now I can just press it. If you wanna lightly starch it, you can. And it's ready to set aside so that we can make middles the next time that we are together. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video lesson. If you are wondering whether or not you're gonna like this project, just make a few of these with some scrap and then decide later. There's no commitment. Um, I will provide all the templates that you need for this project on the website. So you'll be able to, to print anything that you have. Uh, you'll be able to print it. And if you can't print it, I will show you how to draw it just in case you are without a printer or you can't get to a place where there's a printer. Okay, friends, look at this. I'm gonna take now my uh, wool pressing mat and I'm gonna give this uh, guy a little bit of pressing now. So I'm gonna stick it on my wool pressing mat and this is looking really, really flat now. And so I'm gonna take my iron and I'm gonna press, give this one hard press from the outside to the inside. My fabric, I, like I said, my jelly roll strips were lightly starched. Don't worry about your center being uneven a little bit because when you put your centers in there, it will cover all of that up. And that's looking really, really flat to me. I've got a couple places where I may fiddle with it because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I suffer from that uh, problem. I know some of you guys do too, but sometimes finished is better than perfect. Okay, so this is a complete Dresden. Let me see if I can raise this up. This one now is ready for its center. And so I will use, you can use a coffee mug, a can, anything you want. Uh, you can, I'm gonna take a four inch circle and I'm going to make sure that it overlaps this. I'm gonna cut a four inch circle and put that in the center. And then my first Dresden plate is done. This one is, for those of you who wanna know how wide it is, this one is 12 and a half inches wide. So um, this would fit nicely on a 13 by 13 inch background or even a 14 by 14 inch background if you wanted to make a pillow. If you wanted to make this smaller, you would simply take that 18 degree blade I gave you and you would uh, trim from the top. So if you wanted to make uh, a block that was this size, then you would start with, let's say, instead of five inches, you would start with four and a half or four inches and you would make a smaller Dresden plate like this one. You could also make two Dresden plates like this and layer them on top of each other. At any rate, that is lesson one on how to create a Dresden plate. This is our very first lesson. All of the other lessons will require you to understand this first step in order for you to make all of the flowers that we're gonna be making. And so the imagination uh, that you put into it is what will create your final product. You can make one flower and turn it into a pillow. You can make a dozen of these, or you can make the entire quilt with us. We're gonna be doing this for a whole year. We're gonna make lots of beautiful flowers and we're gonna add them to a nice big background and it's gonna look like a garden. All right, friends, it is almost 3.30. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to share this project with any of your quilty friends who want to try this. This is a great project for beginners. It doesn't look like a beginner project, but it is. All right, friends, um, I will see you guys in a couple of days. I'm gonna be doing a video that I'm releasing with a uh, applique fairy, for those of you who love fairies. Uh, I'm gonna be releasing that in two days. And so I will see you guys again on April the 5th at two o'clock in the afternoon. I love you guys. I appreciate um, all of your support and your kind words. Let me know if you need anything. It was nice talking to you guys. Have a great afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Bye, friends.